Proudly we hail. From New York City, where the American stage begins, here is another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station for your Army and your Air Force to bring you this story as proudly we hail the United States Army. Our story is entitled, Three Strikes and Out. This is the story of a soldier who overcame a great disappointment, how he became involved with red spies from behind the Iron Curtain in a tale of intrigue and murder. Our first act curtain will rise in just a moment, but first, young men, if you're interested in continuing your education, here's important news for you. You can be trained in one of the world's finest technical schools for a career that will be of great benefit to you for the rest of your life. Right now, the United States Army has an urgent need for qualified technicians to operate and maintain the many kinds of equipment developed by science for our modern armed forces. Today, men are being trained in such varied fields as radio, radar, meteorology, mechanics, electronics, photography, and many others. As Army specialists, these men are embarking on careers that offer wonderful opportunities for advancement high living standards, valuable experience, and liberal retirement benefits. In the Army, your future is made secure by a generous retirement plan that costs you nothing. You can retire on a steady income after completing 20 or more years of honorable service, adequate medical care and hospitalization, paid vacations every year, ample recreation and good pay all add up to a high standard of living for members of our Army. A career in today's United States Army offers excellent opportunities for young men with intelligence and ambition. For full information, visit the United States Air Force Recruiting Station. And now your Army and your Air Force present the proudly we hail production, Three Strikes and Out. There's a sergeant stationed in Berlin named Danny Sloan. And outside of Santa Claus, you couldn't find a more popular man with the kids who live in that beleaguered and divided city. Now, if you were a scout for any one of the 16 Major League Baseball teams back in, oh, 1941, 42, the name Daniel Sloan might strike a responsive chord. You see, Danny Sloan was a pitcher, a good pitcher, a guy who lived by the rules of honesty and fair play a guy who loved the competition and sportsmanship of the game, a guy who hated treachery and despotism and all the other isms so much that he had to do something about them. He went into the army and, as you might say, helped pitch a shutout. The end of the war found him in Berlin. He had the points to go home, but he stayed in Germany. He re-enlisted, and then something happened to him. He found something that gave him a bigger kick than pitching a no-hitter in the World Series. He found kids, the ragged and hungry kids who roamed the streets of bombed-out Berlin. And he found out that kids are the same the world over. They need something to do. They need someone to care about them. And he knew from the very beginning that this was the work that would make him happiest. And this was the place where it needed doing. And so he stayed on with the Signal Corps in Berlin, and perhaps he didn't realize it, but he was doing a terrific job for his country creating goodwill, creating a feeling and a spirit of democracy just by being a swell guy. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, Erika will dance again soon, but now all of you must order some food and wine or I won't be able to pay the girl her salary. <laughs> well, is it a bargain? Good. 
Meanwhile, Hermann will ruin your appetites with this miserable orchestra. I would fire him on the spot, but he happens to be my wife's brother. <laughs> so I give you the world's first Kapellmeister, Hermann. Well, Corporal? Oh, it's everything you said it would be, Sergeant. Yeah. Yeah, this is quite a spot. Only us soldiers know about it. I've been coming here, say, uh, almost eight years now, since 45. Mm. Who's this fellow Otto? D does he own the place? <laughs> He's really very funny. Yeah. Well, the way it is now, uh, we stay on our side of the line. The Reds keep to theirs. But a couple of years ago, I used to get a lot of Red soldiers here. Well, that must have been fun. Yeah. Otto's a kind of satirical comedian, you see, yeah. Pokes fun at stuffed shirts and phonies. We had some red officers in here one night, and Otto went into an act about a curtain maker who was trying to get iron thread. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Took a lot of courage on his part. Uh, you know, you lied to me, Danny. Oh? You said you were going out on a reclamation project tonight. Well, we are. Oh, sure, in a nightclub. <laughs> what kind of work can you do with kids in a nightclub? Where are you going to play baseball? On the dance floor? Ah, wow. Sergeant Denny. Oh, hi, Otto. Otto, meet Helen Sullivan. Hello. Uh, pleasure, Corporal. Yeah, you can call her Fraulein. This is her night off. <laughs> Don't break his heart, Fraulein Corporal. He's not a bad fellow. He tells me lies. He didn't ask me to go to a nightclub tonight. He said, one of my kids is missing. Let's go looking for him. So we wind up here. <laughs> Fraulein, he is so wonderful with his children. All right, Otto. I can speak for myself. Otto, I uh, understand you hired a waiter tonight. A new one. Ach, uh, yeah, Johann. Uh, was he one of your boys? Yeah, he left the orphanage, and uh, they're worried about him. Well, I couldn't help it, Danny. I had to give him a job. Well, Otto, he's just a kid. He's 15. Well, he's not strong enough. I let him take it easy. Danny, I knew his father, and, well, the boy has pride. Cannot take charity. Where is he now? Well, when he saw you come in, he went into the kitchen to hide. Oh, I want to talk with him, Otto. I suppose so. Well, excuse me. Yeah. That kid needs rest. Oh, what's the matter, Danny? Well, his name is Johann Reiner. His father did uh, ten years in a concentration camp under the Nazis. And after the war, the old man talked back to the Reds around the town. They lived in some little place about 50 miles east of here. Well, a couple of Red agents walked into the house one night and shot the old man down. Oh. And relatives smuggled Johann into our zone. Poor kid. When did this happen? Oh, about seven years ago. I've, uh, I've been kind of looking after him. Hello, Sergeant Danny. Will you order something? No. The Fräulein Corporal wishes something. Johan, you should be back at the orphanage. Sergeant Danny, please. I wish to thank you for everything, but I cannot accept charity any longer. Johan, all we want you to do is to get well. I'm not sick. No, of course you're not. It's just that you didn't have enough of the right food to eat when you were younger, and... Well, with proper care and rest for a my while... My father, my grandfather, they wouldn't take charity. They had pride. Now, look, it isn't charity. Don't be angry with me, please, Sergeant Danny. I'm old enough to earn my own living. If you try to make me go back, I might have to do something I'd be sorry for. All right, Johan. Do as you please. Good. Then let me buy you a bottle of wine. It'll be a pleasure. Nice kid. Yeah. Uh, what did he mean? Make him do something he'd be sorry for? Oh, well, I suppose Otto told him how they used to handle some of the red officers who used to come in here. The ones who uh, got to feeling their oats. Oh, what was that? Now, look, never tell a girl everything on the first date. Shall we dance? <laughs> Waiter! Waiter! Oh, where's that fool of a waiter? Be quiet, Gregor. You always make yourself conspicuous. Waiter! Aha! Uh -huh. Here you are. Yaman here? A bottle of champagne. Uh, the best in the house. Well, my fine young man, what are you staring at? Champagne, the, the best... Uh, be yeah. quick about it. Off with you. Yeah, mine here. Well, are you a tree? What, what keeps you here? Uh, nothing. Nothing, madam. Then uh, go. Why? Why do you stare at me, I, young man? I, I, I was not staring, mind you. Lie. You are staring no. at me. It's nothing. <laughs> nothing. Nothing, my dear. What, what is this? Why are you crying? Good evening. Is there a problem here? I am Otto in the flesh. <laughs> Johan. Johan. Please, you must excuse Johan. He is not... 
completely sound at times. Well, what day is the boy? Well, seven years ago, his father was shot down in the house by some communist agents before the poor lad's very eyes. Oh, horrible. Well, he can never forget it, naturally. And so there are times when, well, go upstairs and lie down, Johann. Hmm? No, I, I will be all right. I will take this order. Good boy, Johann. The champagne, mein Herr. The very best is Hochweiler 37. Hochweiler 37? But that vintage is all gone. But we have a few bottles still. And I must make amends for my poor service. Bring it. At once. Why did you yell at that boy? Karen, the way he looked at me. Oh, you fool. You always think people are looking at you. Karen, when... When Orloff and I went into Reiner's house that night, there was a little boy in the bedroom. What? You mean there was a witness? You never told me. But it was only a child, perhaps six, seven years old. Why didn't you tell me, Gregor? You should have. And now I look at this waiter. He has the same face. Karen, he knows. I tell you, he knows. You are positive. I watched where he went. He should have gone into the kitchen to get our order. Instead, where? that door on the right. Come, we must waste no time. But, but Karen but must... You be... fool. How can we work in the American sector if someone can reveal your identity to the police? But through here. stairs. Wait. Someone is coming up. Mein Herr, Madam, what are you... You uh, remember this gentleman's face, do you not? I... Oh, no, no, I... Gregor, he was the child? Yes. So you see, little man, we have no choice. Keep away from me. Keep away from me. I, I don't remember. I don't remember. Gregor, take that bottle from him before he... Uh, uh... It would be a pity to break such a valuable bottle. Karen, how can you think of champagne at a time like this? Why not? We will take it home with us to celebrate. Well, what about the boy? Do it quickly. Listen, music. No one will hear. But Karen... Before it stops. Hurry, hurry. I went downstairs to the wine cellar, Sergeant Denny, and I found his body on the stairs. I called the police. But we saw the boy. We spoke to him only last night. Why, Ada, why? I could not say, Denny. Why should anyone want to kill that child? Maybe he was mistaken for someone else, Danny. For whom? He was only a kid. Why should anyone want to shoot a kid? Arco. Yeah? Or do you want to talk with me, Inspector Kramer? I'm uh, looking for the people who might have known the boy. I know him, Inspector. He was a good boy. Yes, everyone agrees, but... What can you say that might be helpful? Inspector, I want the guy who shot that boy. Naturally, so do I. Well, what's going to happen? You're a police officer. Do you have any suspects? Are there any leads, any clues? Sergeant, Fräulein, I'm afraid you have read too many books of detection. What would you have? Murders are usually solved because there are motives. You round up all the people who had a motive for a particular murder. And by the process of elimination, you capture your killer. Now, what is the motive here? I only knew. I watched that kid grow up. I took care of him. And now... We will do our best, Sergeant. Oh, sure. Sure, you'll make out a report, kick it around a couple of days, and then it'll gather dust in a file. Danny, give the man a break. What do you want? I want the killer. He's going to pay for what he did if I have to collect it myself. You are listening to the proudly beheld production, Three Strikes and Out. We'll return to our story in just a moment, but first... Young man, if you're interested in continuing your education, here is important news for you. The United States Army urgently needs qualified technicians to operate and maintain the many kinds of equipment that science has brought into being. Right now, men are being trained in such varied fields as radio, radar, meteorology, mechanics, electronics, photography, and many, many others. This training is given by the finest technical training schools in the world. It is an excellent opportunity for young men with intelligence and ambition. It can be the start of a great career for you. For full details, visit your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station and do it today. You are listening to Proudly We Hail, and now we present the second act of Three Strikes and Out.
Sergeant Danny Sloan has pitched in some tough ball games and has been in some rough spots, but he's never faced a tougher situation than the unsolved murder of a kid, a friend of his. Let's rejoin Sergeant Sloan as he talks to Major Wesley, officer in charge of the intelligence section. Sir, I know I'm not wasting your time. I didn't say you were, Sergeant Sloan. But this is a matter for the German police. I fail to see where it might be a case for the intelligence section. Well, look at it this way, sir. A youngster is shot to death. Why? That seems to be the puzzler. Major, I've been breaking my head over this for two days, and there can only be one answer. And what's that? Well, this kid's father was murdered by red agents. Maybe, maybe Johan knew something. What? I don't know. All right, who would? Well, I don't know, sir. I... I was his only real friend, the only one he ever spoke with. But I'm convinced there's a political angle here, and if there were, would it be our business? Yes, it might. Well, I'm going to find that angle. Sergeant, I know how you feel about this, but we're not playing cops and robbers. I'll assign a few of my men to poke around and see if they can dig up anything. But I don't want you to get into trouble. Well, somebody's going to get into trouble, sir. I've asked for my leave. I'm going to spend it in Berlin. Well, you've introduced a lead of sorts. All right, I'll assign a man. Sure. Uh, I mean, yes, sir. Stay out of trouble, here. Yes, sir. And uh, thank you, sir. Well, Lieutenant Bridges, detail two men to keep an eye on Sergeant Sloan. Yeah, that's Sergeant Daniel Sloan of the signal section. I have an idea that boy is headed for trouble. on the theory that a murderer returns to the scene of the crime? I don't know what I'm operating on, Helen. All I know is I have to start someplace. Well, the kid was alive when we left the club the other night. That was about 10 o'clock. Yeah, and Otto found the body at 11.30. What about Otto? How far can you trust him? Maybe he found the body because he knew it was going to be there, if you see what I mean. No, 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 Helen. We can go all the way with Otto. Oh, I'm just trying to be a detective. <sighs> well, what kind of move can we make? Oh, wait a minute. Otto! Hey, Otto! What can you ask him that we haven't been through already? Hello. Listen, Otto. Otto, did you notice anything strange or different around here the other night? Hey, I have an idea, Danny. Yeah, well, just sit on it a minute, uh, will you? Well, Otto? Look, sir. Well, uh, no, Danny. What can I uh, tell Danny, you? I... look. I've been noticing how this place works. People don't just come in for a drink and then go home. They get here early, fill up the room, uh, Otto puts up the rope, and that's all. The crowd hangs around for hours. The same people. Well... Johan was shot sometime between 10 and 11.30. That's right. He was alive when we left. Say, so, wait a minute. What, what time did you put up the rope that night, Otto? Just before Erika's dance at uh, 9. That means the killer was in this room while we were. All right, Otto. Now, you have a pretty steady crowd here. You know most of them. But how can I remember? Pictures? Pictures of your visit, Sergeant? Oh, uh, hey, you. Is something wrong, uh, no, Sergeant? No, no, no. Listen, uh, these pictures, do you take a shot of all the customers? Oh, I must. Only a few buy, so I must take all, you see. Well, what about the customers who don't buy? Yeah, what do you do with the pictures? Oh, they gather into a big pile, and when I feel like it, I clean out my dark room and throw them away. I see. Oh, what about the pictures you took the night Johan was shot? Do you still have them? Oh, those I have not sold. Well, come on, let's take a look. Otto, you spot these photos for us. Huh? You'll know most of the people. Those you don't, I think, can stand a little checking. Ah, oh, poor Johan. He seemed quite upset that night. Oh, you noticed that, too. Mm. In here. I shall turn on the light. Oh, uh, noticed what? Oh, you know, he had one of those melancholy spells of his, the poor kid. Yeah, yeah, that used to happen to him a lot. For no good reason, he would break down and cry. Did you see him crying too, Marlena? No, no, I did not see him cry. But you said he seemed upset. No, I, I heard him suggest to someone to try a bottle of Hochweiler 37. What? Did you say Hochweiler 37? Yeah. And then someone called to me to take a picture, and then... When I turned my back, he had gone to fill the order. Oh, well, at 37. Wait a minute. Oh, what is it, Danny? It's just a special wine. Uh, here are the pictures. Danny, that means someone who Johann was waiting well, where on. Where was Johann's station? Uh, the left side of the room. I see. Now, let me see the pictures of the people you took who sat at Johann's tables, please. Suppose some of those people bought the pictures and she doesn't have them. Well, you've got all your negatives, haven't you, Marlena? I think so. Now, wait. Um, Johann... Um, he served six tables. Now, see if you can find those six pictures. I should be able to. Mm-hmm. Well, let's see. Ah, yeah. Now, this one, 
No, I know him. That's her Baumann. Wouldn't kill anyone except his mother-in-law. Um, this is an uh, old friend of mine. That's uh, Theodor Weber. Now, he's all right. Mm -hmm. I know these two people. Girl is an actress. She might shoot a producer, but never a waiter. Now, what about this couple? Uh, don't know. Seen them several times. Yeah, I think he's an engineer. But you don't know him, huh? No. Oh, wait. Wait. So for whom could Johann have suggested the Hochweiler 37? Look, Johann had one of his spells, you say. Was he on the floor at the time? Yes. As a matter of fact, he was with this party. Were the same people at these tables all night? I think so. Do you want these pictures, Sergeant Denny? Yeah, yeah, I think I do. But what can you prove other than that they were here that night? I don't know, Otto. I think I'll call in the police now. <laughs> Did you follow all those leads, Inspector? Well, we found out where all of them live. We asked them questions. What kind of questions? Routine questions. And uh, what kind of answers did you get? Routine answers. I'm sorry, there's nothing suspicious about any of them. Mm -hmm. Well, could you, uh, could you discover any trace of uh, commie connections anywhere? None. Do me a favor. Well, it's in your reason. Well, could I have the names and addresses of all the people you checked on in the pictures? What can you do with them? We have already asked all of the questions. Well, maybe I've got a few questions of my own. Danny, hmm. I hate to say this, but did you ever think you might have to give it up? Yeah. Your leave is through Friday. Yeah, I know. Where are we going now? Helen, we've been wasting too much time. Johann's past produced some sort of event that killed him. I bought that two weeks ago. Now, all these people on the list have no visible connections in East Germany. All of them spent their lives in the American, French, or British sectors. Well, does that mean anything? Well, it might. All of them but one. Who? This guy, Gregor Hauptmann. He and his wife, they're from Leipzig. They escaped the Reds and came here a month ago. That's their story. But according to Inspector Kramer, their documents are in order. Yeah, oh, wait a minute. Here's the house. Oh. Oh, what are we going to do? Now, you wait out here, Helen. If I get into trouble, I'm... Nothing doing. I'm coming in with you. See? I rang the bell for you. You need me to take care of all these little chores. Uh, now that we're here, I don't know what to do. Oh, you'll never make a good detective. You're always supposed to have a master plan. Yeah, I... Oh, uh, is Mr. Gregor Hauptmann at home? He is. Well, could I speak to him? Come in. Won't you sit down? I will call my husband. Gregor, an American sergeant and his girl are here. What do they want? That waiter, you know. I have become acquainted with the situation, and it seems this sergeant was a friend of his. Oh. He has been bothering the police to solve the murder. But what does he want with us? How could he suspect? I am just warning you to be ready. Hmm. Shall we offer him something to drink? No. Oh, yes, that bottle of Hochweiler. I thought we would save that for an occasion. Well, there's no time to run and buy anything else. You go inside. I'll fetch the champagne. Yes? I'm Sergeant Sloan. I'd like to ask you something, Herr Hauptmann. Yes? About this young waiter who was murdered. Oh, tragedy. Yeah. Now, you were there that night, and uh, perhaps you might have noticed something out of the ordinary. Anything at all? I would like to help, but I've already told the police. Uh, you come from the eastern zone? Yes, we were fortunate to escape the rats. May I offer you some champagne? Mm. Danny, what's the matter? What are you staring at, Danny? Is something wrong? Uh, uh, no, no. Uh, what uh, were you staring at? Uh, nothing. I think we'd better be going. But I just opened this champagne. Yeah, well, I, uh, I got a headache. Come on, Helen. Wait, what is your hurry? Oh, nothing. I, I... Gregor, something is wrong. Stop him. Stand where you are. Stand or I'll shoot. Danny! So, you know something. What is it? You fool, he knows something now. Why do you take out a gun? Because I could tell that fool waiter stared at me, too. You killed him, didn't you? You were ready to run for the police. Aaron, what are we to do with him? What do you suppose? 
Do not be nervous. My hand is shaking. Uh, give me a drink. Do not advance, American. I'm familiar with tricks. Give me a drink to steady my nerves. Yeah. Would you care for some champagne, Sergeant? Fräulein, your last drink. No, thanks. I hope you don't mind if I have one. <sighs> well, that's better. Well, my friends, I'm sorry. Hurry. There's no one in the alleyway. We can escape through the rear entrance unnoticed. Uh, yes, yes. <laughs> I... Gregor, uh, what is... My throat. My throat, it, it's burning. My, my throat. I, I, Jump in, Danny. Uh, uh, stand back, lady, stand back. Uh, oh, Danny, who's that? Yes, open it. Go on, open it. All right. Major said to keep an eye on you. We thought I heard a shot. Yeah, his gun went off when I jumped him. The bullet went wild. But what happened to him? Ah, the dame. They're out cold. If these people killed Johan, and I can prove it. Danny, now I listen. Don't... Remember I told you how Otto and his waiters used to take care of commie soldiers who tried to wreck the joint? Yes, but... Well, they fed him a specially prepared drink. Hochweiler 37. And that's what Johan had in mind for these people. But it's a very good champagne. Look, honey... Brooklyn, New York, London, England, Chicago, Illinois, Berlin, Germany. A drink with a knockout drug added is the same anywhere. Plan ahead to get ahead. There's sound advice for you young men of America. And here's how you can act on that advice. Your United States Army is offering a bright future in such interesting technical fields as radio, radar, electronics, mechanics, meteorology, photography, and many, many others. Perhaps you're not qualified in any of these urgently needed skills. Well, here's the answer to that. The United States Army, through its many fine technical schools, is prepared to train you in the field for which you show an aptitude. Now, there's a great opportunity, your opportunity to plan ahead, to get ahead. For full details, visit your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station now. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center for the United States Army and United States Air Force Recruiting Service. This is Kenneth Banghart speaking and inviting you to tune in this same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail. <laughs>